I went deep into the dark web to figure out how effective two-factor authentication is at keeping your online accounts safe. And what I saw scared me. Security experts, including me, have been telling you for years that setting up two-factor authentication on your accounts is gonna help keep you safe. And it's true, but there's a catch. You have to use the right type of two-factor authentication to keep your online accounts secure. Otherwise, your online accounts may not be as safe as you think they are. In this video, I'm gonna tell you about three attack techniques that hackers are talking about on the dark web that they're using to bypass your implementation of two-factor authentication and gain access into your online accounts. And stick around to the end because we'll talk about one form of two-factor authentication that hackers are worried about and that's what you wanna hone in on to implement for your online accounts. The first MFA bypass technique that we're gonna talk about is SIM swapping. So let's bring in Dave to give us an example here. Dave just set up MFA on his crypto account. He's pretty excited because he knows that MFA is important and that he wants to keep his crypto assets secure. But there's a problem here. He chose the least secure method of a multi-factor authentication, an SMS message or a text message. So while Dave is feeling pretty good about himself right now and patting himself on the back, the hacker is feeling even better because he knows this is a very easy thing to try to bypass. The attacker is going to start with some social engineering to get some base information. First, they'll fish Dave to get the username and password for that crypto account. Then, they're going to start looking online to identify information on Dave. They're going to be able to get things like his mother's maiden name, his name of a first pet, and where he went to his elementary school. Thank you, social media. With that, they're then going to go and figure out which mobile provider that Dave is using. In this case, we're going to say it's Teen Mobile. The hacker calls up Teen Mobile, pretending to be Dave, and asks to transfer his phone number to a different device. This is a device that the hacker owns. When that friendly customer service rep asks all the information that Dave is going to have, the hacker has it all. Once that information is provided, that number gets transferred from Dave's cell phone to the cell phone that the hacker owns. Now, using the username and password that the hacker already collected, they simply log in to Dave's crypto account and then that text message with that one-time password is gonna go straight to the attacker's device. They get that, they type it in, and they have access into Dave's crypto assets. In response to falling prey to the SMS swap attack, Dave decides to level up his two-factor authentication solution to an application-based one-time password solution. This is an application that lives on your cell phone and that will provide you a randomly generated code that changes every 60 seconds or so. So Dave is feeling pretty good right now because he's doing what most security experts are going to recommend. It's using an app-based MFA solution. But the hacker is unfazed because they have a workaround for this as well. The hacker is going to start by sending Dave a phishing email. This phishing email is going to contain a link to a document. When Dave clicks on that link, he's going to then be prompted for a Microsoft 365 login. This is going to look like a normal login page because the attacker has just copied all of the looks and put it onto their own phishing page. When Dave sees the login screen, he enters his username and password. For Dave, he thinks this is going to go to the Microsoft 365 login page, but those credentials are going to the attacker's server. The attacker then takes those credentials and forwards them over to Microsoft 365 to start the login. When Microsoft gets these login credentials, it will verify that and then send back a challenge for that two-factor authentication. When the attacker sees this, they simply prompt the user for that and Dave sees the updated login page asking to enter the one-time password from his Authenticator app. Dave simply types that in and again, that code goes straight to the attacker who then sends that over to Microsoft and Microsoft will validate that saying it approves of that one-time password. At this point, Microsoft is going to send back what's known as a session cookie. A session cookie is like a hall pass for the user. It lives in the browser and just says that you've already authenticated and you have access to all of the resources that are already allowed by that user. So the hacker is going to pass this session cookie back over to Dave to make sure that it looks like a legitimate login for him and he can complete that session. 
However, the attacker's also keeping a copy of that session cookie. And when they're ready, they simply put that into their browser and then they can effectively impersonate Dave and have access to all of the resources that Dave typically would. This type of attack is known as adversary in the middle. It allows an attacker to use these kits to bypass weaker forms of MFA. This is going to include things like text messages and authenticator apps that are gonna provide a one-time code. Dave has had enough, but he's gonna continue pushing for MFA. And so he up-levels to another form of an application-based authenticator, but this time it's using MFA push-based authentication. So instead of having to type in a one-time password, instead, when he logs in, it's going to prompt it on his phone and he simply clicks a button. So it removes the one-time password and just allows him to use the device that he owns. Well, the hacker is ready for this as well. One night, as Dave is enjoying some delicious tacos for dinner, his phone prompts him for a login. Dave ignores it and goes on eating his tacos. But then it happens again. And then it happens again. And then it happens again. Finally, Dave gets so fed up with this because he's trying to enjoy his tacos in peace that he just accepts it, thinking that it was some random login, automated, that was probably going to be okay anyway. Well, in the background, this is the hacker attempting to log into Dave's account. The hacker has just executed what's known as an MFA fatigue attack. In this scenario, the attacker simply needs to steal the username and password for Dave's account and then try to log in. And then it's a battle of wits. Who can outlast each other? In this case, the attacker is going to repeatedly log in until the user gets so frustrated that they're just going to click accept to allow this login to go through. Now, although the hackers are talking about these MFA bypass techniques, on the dark web, it doesn't mean you don't want to set up MFA on your online accounts. It is still the single most effective thing that you can do to up-level the security of your online accounts. Just be cognizant that hackers do have ways to try to bypass them. Now, if you really want to up-level your game, there's one form of MFA that hackers really hate because they haven't figured out an effective way to consistently bypass it. This is known as FIDO compliant MFA. This is a technology that when you set it up on the website, it's only going to work between the device that you set it up with and the application that you configure that with. These different attacks with the adversary in the middle simply will not work because there's no two-factor authentication set up with the attacker's phishing site. You'll see this FIDO compliant technology in things like passwordless logons, on hardware keys, and even on your mobile device. And don't forget, even with two-factor authentication, you need to have a strong password. And that's why I recommend you use a password vault to help manage your passwords. And you can learn more about those here.